I think we can all agree that 3D printers are an incredible technology, but they can only 3D print designs that we create. And if you're sick of just downloading things off the internet to print and you want to dip your feet into 3D modeling your own things, well, you've come to the right place because in 2024, there is a plethora of 3D modeling programs that are completely free. But which ones are worth your time? Well, I'll be honest, I had no idea. I first got into 3D modeling back when I was 15 and the landscapes changed so much since then. And I was honestly surprised how many options there are out there and then disappointed at the limitations a lot of them have. So I took it upon myself to test out 10 free CAD programs you can get in 2024 to see which one is best. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. Some of you might remember I did a video similar to this back in 2019. Well, unfortunately, that video is now completely outdated. The landscape's completely changed since then, for better and for worse. But there are still so many options if you want to learn CAD or computer-aided design. I do want to be clear here that I'm talking about CAD and not organic 3D modeling. CAD or computer-aided design is really designing stuff for mechanical use, and precision drawing, but it's not like freeform sculpting. So if you're an artist and you like to do freeform sketching and sculpting, almost like working with virtual clay, there are many other programs that do that sort of thing. That's not what I'm covering in this video. I'm covering programs that you can use to design headphone holders, phone mounts, and different things around the house that need precise measurements to precise holes and hole positions to then recreate that with 3D printing. And if you'd like a TLDR, well, here is a complete list of all the programs I'm gonna talk about in this video. But be warned, there is no best free CAD program. I wish there was, but each of these programs in this list have very strong pros and very strong cons. And it's up to you to decide what suits your needs best. And to properly test out all of these CAD programs, I designed this. This is the open source Maker coin. I first came up with the idea of Maker Coins way back in like 2015 as a way of testing small amounts of material and creating like a swatch so I could see what the filament looks like and then decide if I want to use it in other projects. And the Humble Maker Coin has evolved a lot over the years from just a quick test print to a fantastic first CAD project you can design and print with thousands of people around the world coming up with their own spin on the concept. So let me just step you through in Fusion 360 this open source Maker Coin design and I'll be sharing the full plans online, including the source files, so you can use this as a basis to test and learn in whatever CAD program you choose. It starts off with a side profile that is then revolved to create the main body of the coin. Middle of the coin is six millimeters high, and it comes out in this gentle arc to the outside of the coin, which is a circle, which has a radius of five, um, and then we have a center point from the circle to the center of the coin, which is 20 millimeters, which gives us an overall size of 50 millimeters in diameter. This profile is then revolved to create the body of the maker coin, and then we do another sketch. This circle is simply a sketch that's placed at a certain distance from the center of the coin. It's uh, 55 millimeters in diameter, or 27.5 uh, millimeters from the center of the coin, and it's 14 millimeters in diameter. Then that circle is removed from the body of the maker coin, which is an extrude cut or a a hole, or depending on what the software calls it. Essentially, it removes the material of that circle from the coin. And then we apply a chamfer to these edges of two millimeters. And then we pattern these details, the chamfer and the extruded cut, around the body of the maker coin eight times. So you end up with this look. And then finally, some text is punched out of the middle of the maker coin, which is offset from the bottom of the maker coin, five millimeters, so it doesn't cut all the way through, and just simply does that detail at the top. Now, I haven't fully defined the the font and the size of the font, because I found with all these different CAD programs, doing text is wildly different. Some can't do it at all. Some can only do it by doing weird hacky things. So my testing methodology is this. I want to make this coin as closely accurately as possible to the reference here in Fusion 360. So I'm gonna have the revolve using the original sketch and then doing the extrude cut and pattern and then the fillets if possible in the CAD program testing. And then finally the text extrude out the coin and then these will be 3D printed. I don't really know what the fairest way is of deciding which program to start with, so I'm just gonna put them all into this little baggie, mix them up, and pull out a random one. And our first program to check out is Onshape. Onshape is a CAD program that runs 
completely on the cloud, which means all you need is a web browser and a strong internet connection to get access to an incredibly powerful modeling suite. Now this does mean you can't ever go offline if you want to use Onshape, you have to use it on the cloud and it means that they can change anything at any time which they did quite a few years ago. I actually originally started using Onshape on the channel because it was a great alternative to SolidWorks, which I didn't have access to anymore after leaving university because it's crazy expensive. And Onshape was effectively equivalent to the modeling style and power of SolidWorks, but free. However, over time they did clamp down on the free tier and ratcheted up the cost of the paid subscription, which means now that if you want to use Onshape for free, it has a strong caveat. All of your models are publicly accessible. You can't design anything in the free tier on shape and keep it private, which might be perfect for you if you're designing stuff just for a hobby or in my case, for example, with the Maker Coin, allowing me to easily share it with you guys doesn't affect me. But if you're designing stuff for business or it's proprietary or you, know, you wanna keep it secret, you cannot do it for free and on shape. You have to pay the subscription and it's not that cheap. For a business, totally fine. For a hobbyist, it's unreasonable. As someone who has experience with SolidWorks and Fusion 360, learning on shape and its interface was honestly a breeze. It was the easiest out of all the CAD programs I've tested that I'm not, uh, that I don't use every day that I could just get in and start modeling. Uh, getting this coin done was almost the same as the process in Fusion 360, uh, just a slightly different layout. So here on the left with on shape, fully parametric, you can step through this design feature tree. You roll it back all the way to start like this. And here you can see I've got my original sketch. What I do like about Onshape is it's very forgiving with your profiles if they have intersecting uh, geometry. For example, this circle is a full circle, not just an arc. And then this line here, which I'm using as a tangential relation to that top of the maker coin. It's not geometry that's used in the model, but it doesn't care about it being there in the first place. Often CAD programs will require you to snip away geometry to make a full cohesive uh, profile or it requires you to turn things into what's called construction geometry, where it's like not, not seen in the actual creation of the solid bodies. But I found like Fusion 360, Onshape's very forgiving because all you do when you go to your, your um, process with Revolve, you just simply click what profiles you want to use in the Revolve and then Revolve Access, you can simply say where you want to Revolve from. So it could be here, for example, but we want to Revolve from the center of the coin. Very, very quick, very snappy, even though it's online, I, I feel no uh, lag or anything that's impeding my design process. And then with my sketch and extrude of the corner, again, exactly the same as Fusion 360, no issues there. You could do a fillet, two millimeter fillet, no complaints. Did a circular pattern of that fillet. And then finally, the text tool is actually very fully featured. I actually prefer the text tool in here to the one in Fusion 360 because it gives you these fantastic construction geometries, which lets you uh, perfectly center text, which is notoriously hard to dimension in your objects like this. And then the extrude works no problems. And I offset it from the bottom of the coin simply by doing a depth offset of five millimeters from the bottom where the sketch was. And then the coin's complete. When it comes to exporting a model out of Onshape, they give you a ton of different formats to choose from. And none of these are limited in any way, which is really cool to see. Uh, if you want to get a, a good file for 3D printing with modern slices, download a step because that will preserve the curves much better than STL or 3MF. But yeah, look at these different formats. You can export as a SolidWorks format if you wanna go back into SolidWorks or you have someone who has that software. Rhino, uh, OBJ, 3MF, STL, all of these are really, really neat. So I'm just gonna download as a step, no problem. Different versions of, of step, very, very cool. Download that, put it into your slicer and 3D print your maker coin. So by far, Onshape's one of the most powerful free CAD packages accessible right now but it does have the two major caveats of your files have to be public. You know, you're doing this for a hobby, totally fine. But if you're doing it for a business, you have to get the, the paid plan and they could change it at any time. This is fully cloud. So they could update their terms and services. They could limit features. They could decide they don't want a free plan at all. And then your models are lost forever. So I do highly recommend if you're using Onshape for yourself, Make sure you download your models when they're done so you have them as a reference on your own computer just in case something changes because they have changed things in the past. I don't know if they're gonna change them again in the future. Okay, what do we have next? Design Spark. Design Spark is a free CAD solid modeling program from RS Components and it's been heavily requested by you guys here on the channel. And I'll be honest, I'd never actually checked it out 
So I downloaded it from their website. You do need to sign up to make an account and you sign in once, but it is downloaded to the computer. So it doesn't run on the cloud, which is nice. And this is the maker coin I managed to do in Design Spark Mechanical. So it looks pretty good. I managed to get it done almost correctly, except for the text, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but the thing about this software is it is sketch based. So you do a sketch and you can do things to it, but it's not parametric. You can't go back to that sketch and edit it. It's direct modeling. So you can push, pull, modify surfaces as you go along and you can undo obviously, but you can't go back in time with a feature tree as such. There's no functionality like that in Design Spark. The interface for Design Spark Mechanical feels a little bit outdated and a little bit confusing if you're coming from software like SolidWorks or Fusion 360. It's still sketch based. So for example, I go to sketch mode and then I can uh, draw, for example, a rectangle on the, the Y, X plane here. There's all sorts of relations that you might be familiar with like coincident, you've got tangential and that sort of thing. So you can do a lot of uh, very accurate measured drawing in Design Spark, and then when you're done, this is where you might get a bit confused. So you're looking for like an extrude or evolve function, but instead you have this thing called pull. And with pull, it can do a pull direction, which is an extrude, or it can revolve, or you can even sweep if you have a, a guide curve to sweep the object. For example, I could turn this square into a cube, or I could revolve it. So for example, I select revolve, select the object, and then the rotation, and then revolve it. Or you can do a combination of both. So I can do an extrude like this, pull the object out, you know, say pull it out 10. And then I can select revolve, choose that face, choose the axis I want to revolve it around, and then revolve it like that. So it's pretty cool and intuitive in that regard, but I don't like the fact you can't go back and then change the sketch to update it. Uh, it's lacking that functionality, which in my eyes makes it quite limited. However, if you know exactly what you want to do, then creating something like the maker coin is quite simple. I just did a sketch with a revolve, and then I did a cutout here for the edge of the coin, and then I patterned that around, and then doing a fillet, no problem at all. But doing text in Design Spark is really bad. Uh, it's essentially a hack. Uh, all the tutorials show how to do it, but you basically use dimensioning tools. So this is a dimensioning tool to select different areas of the sketch like that, and you get text this way. And then you project this text into the geometry and then you can use that to do an extrude. And it's a really dodgy way of doing it. And the reason that it's backwards is because I projected it off this, this back plane. So the text is facing the wrong way and you can't change it in any way. You have to make sure you're projecting in the right direction to do it right. So it's not a great way of doing text. So I don't like that. However, if you're okay with the direct modeling style in uh, Design Spark, then give it a go. It's free and it downloads to the computer. So you don't need an internet connection for it to work. And next we have 3D Builder. Yep, bet you didn't see that one coming. If you have Windows 10 or 11, then you have 3D Builder built in right now. And this is a really important program to know about because it can do a lot of useful things for 3D printing. Not only does it have a really powerful file repair functionality, where you can dump your file in and it will actually repair bad meshes to make them suitable for 3D printing, but you can actually model basic things in 3D Builder. And I never really thought about it until I came across a random video on YouTube where someone was doing their model in this software and it's basic, but it did the job. If you want a 3D model in 3D Builder, it's very similar to Tinkercad in which you start with primitives, then you change their dimensions, and then you can add or subtract them to make more complex shapes. You can drag in existing STL files that you might have already where you want to modify them, or you can start from scratch with some primitives built in. So for the maker coin, this is actually, if you think about it, a torus with you know the outside shape and then you've got a, a that cut in the top we revolve it but it's actually just a sphere with the right dimensions cutting in and then you've got those cutouts which are cylinders around the outside and by doing that you can end up with this which is our maker coin now it doesn't have any fillets or anything because well this is not a CAD program let me stress that 3d builder will not replace a proper CAD software. It just won't. It's fantastic for quickly modifying STL files or creating very simple objects. And I do really like the built-in ability to emboss or deboss text. Like, I mean, this does it really well, but Design Spark Mechanical can't, <laughs> you know, go figure. Uh, but this is not a CAD program. But for simple things, it might suit you perfectly. And it's built in right there in Windows 10 and 11, ready to go. It's lightweight. It's easy to use. And, you know, 
it kind of does the job. So maybe it'll do it for you as well. Alrighty, what do we have next? FreeCAD with an asterisk. This is FreeCAD. I know this is gonna upset a lot of people, but despite FreeCAD being an open source parametric 3D modeling program, I can't use it. I've never been able to use it. The navigation is just so foreign to me despite having years of CAD experience. Just starting a sketch on a plane in the part design workflow, I, I don't know how it works. That all changed with Onzul, which is a modified version of FreeCAD done by a company. So it takes this and turns it into this. And in my opinion, this has revolutionized the accessibility of FreeCAD. Yes, it is a company, so now it's no longer completely open source, but it is free unless you want additional functionality that you don't need as an individual. And it's made it so much easier to use FreeCAD. So if you've given FreeCAD a go before and you couldn't get it to work, like you just couldn't navigate it, give Onzul a go, because this has changed my opinion of the whole software suite and I was able to do a really, really funky maker coin using it. So you fire up Onzul and it says, what do you want to do? So I want to do a standard part. And then it goes into this workspace, which is FreeCAD. It's just been modified with a slightly different user interface. So from here, it's got this task bar at the side and it's really intuitive. It says, well, what do you want to do? So I want to create a sketch. All right, create a sketch. What plane do I want to create that sketch on? I want to create it on the XZ plane for the side of the revolve. And in the sketch workflow, you're greeted with a lot of familiar functionality. So you have the different kinds of sketches. So I can draw a line from here to here. I can draw another line here to here. I can drop an arc in, so like here to here. And I can drop a, uh, another one in from here to here. Uh, and then you can drop in your relations. So I can do a tangential uh, constraint and then I can constrain this arc with this one, uh, this line with this arc. And it's really intuitive. You, it's little, there's little pop-ups telling you what to do. So coming from Fusion 360, um, I had very little uh, issues adapting to this user interface. But here's one I prepared earlier. This is the maker coin that I did in the Onzul version of FreeCAD. Uh, the rotation's a little bit weird. You hold down uh, I might change this, but you hold down the, the scroll wheel and then click <laughs> to uh, orbit around the object. It's a little bit strange, not really like that. However, really cool thing here on the left hand side, you can see we have a feature tree. So we can go back at any time to change our original sketches. So I can go back in, change the original sketch I did for that revolve and say, okay, well, I want this to be eight millimeters in diameter. All right, and let's update that and then close the sketch. And there you go, it's updated perfectly. Uh, well, not quite perfectly where I have the text needs to be punched up higher, but again, I can go in and change that. And that's just a taste of the functionality within uh, the Onzul branch of FreeCAD. You can do full assemblies. There's functionality for online collaboration and that sort of thing, cloud things. I'm not interested in that. Uh, if you are, then it might be a very viable alternative to something like, on, like uh, Onshape or Fusion 360. But for me, just this, this functionality alone is groundbreaking for a free program. And the export options in this software are wonderful. So if you go to file, uh, I'll select the model first. Body, file, export. You can see just how many different options we have for export. I'm gonna move that out of the way. Uh, so many. Um, we can export all these crazy different formats. Most modern slices can import step files now, which is fantastic. So you can go down here and then export as a step. No worries. But don't rush out and download this version of FreeCAD right away. I do have a few small complaints and there's, there's a few caveats to it. Complaint number one, doing the text is very possible, but kind of annoying. Uh, you have to navigate manually to the font file. Like there is no drop down of fonts. You have to go find them on your system, which is very strange to me because they'd be the same place on every Windows system. But um, yeah, you have to navigate to it. Maybe it's because it's you know, open source and it can be used in different operating systems. I'm not sure, but you do need to go do that. And it's a little bit clunky. Another possible gotcha with Onzul is the fact that it is a private company building on open source software. So what they offer could change at any point. And at the end of the day, they need to recoup their investment. So they might change what you get when you get the software. So currently for free, you get the CAD suite and it works offline. So you can download that right now, fantastic. But if you want uh, anything else, like the ability to upload large amounts of files and collaborate with other people, you have to start paying. 
you'd pay very little, $10 a month right now, all the way up to, you know, enterprise versions with all sorts of crazy stuff. But this could change at any time. So just be aware of that. But it's, a, in my opinion, a very small gotcha. I totally understand that a lot of people are upset with open source software being co-opted by private companies. But I'm really sorry. The version as it stands of FreeCAD right now isn't usable. In my opinion, this makes it usable coming from something like SolidWorks or Fusion 360. And hey, it's free, so I'm all for it. All right, we're about halfway there. Next up we have Blender. Bet you didn't see this one coming, but it's not the Blender you think it is. It's Blender with an add-on called CAD Sketcher. Blender has to be by far one of the most famous and popular free 3D modeling suites out there. It's completely open source, community supported, and it's been used for so many different applications. Originally it was for 3D animation, and it slowly became more useful for you know, 3D modeling for game design and that sort of thing, and now more and more useful for 3D printing as well. But I would say the most of the functionality out of Blender is more suitable for artistic use and applications that don't need precise measured drawing because the software just doesn't really offer that out of the box. However, I came across an add-on for Blender that changes all of that. And for someone like me who likes to do sketched base modeling, changed everything. And it's called CAD Sketcher. CAD Sketcher brings measured drawing into Blender and it's fully parametric, which means you can go back into your sketch, update it, and then the model will update to suit. It is really funky. It's really early days, but CAD Sketcher already shows so much promise and I was able to pretty much make this maker coin with very little issue, except for a few caveats that we'll talk about. So here I've got my maker coin in Blender and all the geometry you see except for the text has been created using CAD Sketcher. So here we have a little add-in navigation folder called Sketcher. When you install the add-on, there's a full walkthrough on how to do it. And there's heaps of tutorials for CAD Sketcher, which is wonderful. I'll link many in the description below. Uh, but what's really neat is this, for example, I go into this original sketch for my Revolve. You can edit that. And then let's uh, navigate to look at it. The big thing going between all these CAD programs is like the navigation hotkeys are all different. It's really frustrating. Anyway, cool. So here you can see the profile for that Revolve. And you notice it looks very familiar. It's like most other measured drawing in other software. You've got your dimensions. So for example, this is 10 millimeters in diameter. You've got little, uh, little constraints there, that little tangential constraint. We've got little uh, here like vertical and horizontal constraints. And these are all created as entities and dimensions here that you can navigate through in the sketching workflow. So for example, if I need to dimension this outer curve of the maker coin, you see it's currently not dimensioned, but everything updates very, very nicely with it. Uh, I can just go to diameter and then select it and then it drops in a diameter. And then here on the right hand side, I can select that, that uh, diameter and I can change it to whatever, whatever I want. So like eight updates to eight, or I can change it to 10, which is where it should be. And you go around and, measure, and can fully constrain your drawing like this. And then when you're done, you can assign it as a different entity. So for example, I assigned it as a mesh. And then if I have that sketch selected, this is when the Blender side takes over. So Blender works with what's known as modifiers. So these will apply a, an effect to the geometry. And the really neat thing about modifiers is that they're not permanent until you bake them in. You can go through and change these at any time to update your model until you're, you're done and you're happy and you can export it. So for example, this uh, sketch starts with an, a screw modifier, which is essentially the, the Blender's version of a revolve. So for example, it's got 360 degrees there, make it 180. And then it's broken a few things, but that's okay. You can see here, it's only 180 there. So, okay, we want to complete it. So 360, like that. Sweet. Now I've got that other sketch for that cutout on the side of the maker coin. Again, that's measured at 14 millimeters. I could change that to, I don't know, 10 maybe. And then update that. And then everything updates. And that sketch there has been Boolean differenced from the original maker coin. So a lot of these terms might seem familiar if you're coming from other CAD programs. And really, it's not too difficult to learn. So for a lot of simple parts where you've got arrays of holes and simple geometry, very, very usable. I would recommend giving CAD Sketcher a go. 
But the issue here is if you want to do anything more crazy, like if I want to fillet this maker coin, well then you have to start breaking geometry. So what you have to do is you need to bake those modifiers to create a, uh, a final shape and then you have to modify that baked geometry. I don't know if that's the right term, but essentially you cannot apply a fillet to this. Blender will let you do fillets, you know, it's a different modifier and different workflow, but it's back to its more traditional workflow of working with a solid object and modifying it uh, to suit. You can't really have the parametric functionality that CAD Sketcher gives you if you want to use those features. In terms of the export quality from Blender, you do need to export as a mesh, so uh, as a STL for example, and you'll notice that the top of the maker coin has these facets. Now again, those are the triangles I mentioned, and Blender exports will have those triangles because it's a mesh based workflow. Uh, but for example, I'm going into screw here, I noticed that um, I've only got 16 steps, and that would be the 16 steps you can see here. So I could increase this to have higher detail, but obviously the more triangles you shove into the model, the higher the, the larger the file size and the more uh, intensive it is to work on the model in the software. So do keep that in mind. So I'd say CAD Sketcher is absolutely perfect if you already use Blender, but you want to add some measured drawing CAD style capability to your workflow because it is really, really neat. And you can download it from Gumroad. It is free. Everything in this list is free, but throw the guys a few bucks, you know, it's absolutely worth it and then enjoy this extra functionality in Blender because Blender is open source, it will always be available, it'll be on your computer forever, it's yours to keep, definitely worth checking out. Next up, Fusion 360. If you're familiar with my channel at all, then you'll know that I've been using Fusion 360 from Autodesk for years now and it's gotten better and better with each successive year with more functionality and it's an incredible piece of software. It runs on your computer but needs cloud connectivity to function properly so you do need an internet connection at all times. And well, it's free, sort of. So the big issue with Fusion 360 is over the years, they've been reducing the capability of the free version and making it harder and harder to maintain a free version. Because, well, fair enough, they've invested all this money into the software, they wanna get their return on investment, they want you to jump on to the paid plans. The catch is the paid plans are not cheap. So a couple of years ago, I actually jumped on from a uh, startup license to a paid plan because I'm using it for a job. This is a job on YouTube. I know it doesn't seem like it is, but basically I'm using it for work. So I pay for a license. When I jumped in, they had a very special locked in price where I said it wasn't gonna change. I pay $420 Australian each year. So it's not a huge amount to me because I use it for my work, but for a hobbyist, that would be a lot. But here's the thing. That's not what it is anymore. If you wanted to pay Fusion 360 now and jump on, it's a thousand dollars a year Australian to get a license for Fusion 360. And that's just the, like the base version of Fusion 360. If you wanna get all the additional functionality they have on offer, uh, like uh, analysis and cam and all this other stuff, you have to pay more. So it gets very expensive very fast. And it's kind of the catalyst for this video because so many of my tutorials were made with the expectation that Fusion 360 would be free to use for hobbyists, but it's getting harder to do that. So this video is to give people options in case it's no longer viable. If you're a student, well, you can get access to any Autodesk software, not just Fusion, uh, for free, as long as you got a student ID. But as soon as you sort of enter that sort of awkward space of doing it as a hobby, um, they're making it a bit more difficult. You can get it, but I don't know how long it's gonna be possible. Now I'll be completely upfront with you guys, I'm gonna keep using and paying for Fusion 360 for my own models because I can use it really effectively and I'm really quick at modeling in it and it does exactly what I want. This Maker Coin took me like five minutes. It has the feature tree at the bottom where I got my sketch and then it does a revolve and then it does another cut, you know, here. Um, I've got the, the hotkeys all dialed in, they work great. And then I can do that, that fillet, the pattern and then punch some text in. It's perfect, it works fantastic for me, but it might not be the solution that you're looking for if you're just getting in as a hobby, or alternatively, if you're trying to make a business, like bootstrap a business and you need CAD software, well then maybe you can't afford the licensing for Fusion and maybe the functionality in here is just a bit more than you need. Maybe those other options that I've mentioned might be more suitable. But it's no surprise that the exported file from Fusion, I used a step export, made a fantastic maker coin, and yeah, it does a really, really good job. Next is Shaper 3D. Shaper 3D is a fairly new modeling program that's come onto the block lately. I've seen Uncle Jesse 
say that he uses it a lot for his simple modeling. And a lot of you guys suggested I checked it out. It's very easy to get Shaper 3D. It's actually on the Windows Store or you can actually download it for tablet use and that sort of thing. And it has these different pricing tiers. Now, this is the thing. You do have to pay for proper functionality and they make it painfully obvious how limited the free version is. But the free version lets you do two projects. It gives you access to the modeling tools and it lets you export a low resolution STL file. That's it. And I'll, we'll get to how much of annoyance and uh, uh, cripple that is in a second. But let's go to Shaper 3D. The software itself was very intuitive. When you fire it up, it gives you a wizard to learn how the modeling interface works. It takes about five minutes. And once you've done that wizard, if you've got any 3D modeling experience, then you'll pick it up right away. And what I really like about it is it's sort of like a combination of parametric and freeform um, direct modeling. So on the, the right here, you do have a history tree. So you can go back in and change any of these functions you've done and the model will update. So for my sketch, I can go to that sketch and then I can update it. So let's say I want to change the size to 12 like that. Um, <laughs> and it moved up for some reason, the revolution, I can go through and change that. Yeah, maybe I just want it to be a little bit or bigger. It's very direct uh, and very easy to use and doesn't throw errors. So a lot of CAD programs will uh, throw errors if you break stuff down the line. It just kind of tries to make it work. It doesn't really seem to care. Like for example, go to the pattern, wonderful. Like say, okay, I only want six nubbins on the side. Updates, wonderful, really quick. And for 25 bucks US a month, I can see this being a really worthwhile investment if you want to just have access to basic 3D modeling, that's really, really intuitive and fast. And again, designed to work on a tablet. It's very, um, very easy to, to be hands-on. You can see how like when you click numbers, it pops up with like, you just, just touch in the dimensions you want, which I really like. The only issue is the free version is essentially like a limited trial. There's not really the ability to use the free version for anything more than just trying the software out because you know, you'll see it says unlock all the features it's trying to make you pay. And if you go to file and then export, you'll notice that, oh, pro, 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 pro. What can I do? I can only export as a 3MF or a STL at a low resolution. And when they say low, they mean low. It is abysmally low. Like it has decimated the quality of this maker coin which means that when it comes to designing your amazing object and exporting it, you're gonna be pretty peeved off if you discover it right at that end, uh, end stage there. So I'm telling you guys right now, the free version is great, it's a great way to get access to the software and try it out. But when it comes to exporting, especially if you have lots of curves on your object, you will have to pay for the, the um, subscription. Um, the free export is just so uh, low resolution that you can actually see all the triangles in the 3D print. It's really not acceptable, but I actually quite like how streamlined and easy to use the software is. And for 25 bucks a month, it's a heck of a lot more affordable than some of the other options I've talked about in this list when it comes to their paid tiers. Next up, Tinkercad. Tinkercad is the OG, easy to use, accessible 3D modeling program. It's been around since 2011. And I used to teach this to kids at, at uh, high school, like well, even early high school level, like 13, 14 year olds, and they would just pick it up instantly. But fun fact, Tinkercad almost ceased to exist over 10 years ago. What happened was the company behind it was working on another big startup idea, which used the computers and the grunt that they were using to run Tinkercad because it's all cloud-based. And they were like, we're gonna be focusing on that. We're closing down Tinkercad. It was an experiment. We've done it, it's run its course. And the outcry was so large that Autodesk stepped in to buy Tinkercad and save it. And it's still to this day free to access. You just make an account, log in, and you can start 3D tinkering. And look, Autodesk for all the stuff they've done, you know, changing the price of Fusion 360, taking away features, you can thank them for actually keeping Tinkercad alive because it is a great entryway into 3D modeling for kids and some adults. That's just the thing though, Tinkercad isn't really a CAD program for what you might expect a CAD program to be. Essentially what it is, is a library of primitives that you can bring in, change their dimensions, and then add or subtract them from each other to make more complicated shapes. So for example, I'll grab this cube from the right hand side, and then I'll grab a uh, this, this cylinder that's turned into a hole, 
and in Tinkercad, a hole cuts away, whereas a solid will combine. So you can turn anything to a hole and anything into a solid, but to combine these objects, you select both of them, and then you do group. And what this will do is cut away the hole from the solid. Uh, for example, if I wanted to add it to it, I could change the, the cylinder to a solid, and then now when I group them, they add together like this, which is great, right? So you can do some pretty simple stuff very quickly, and you see it's definitely aimed for kids because you can go in and like drag in like, oh yeah, look, a little figurine, yay. <laughs> looks, looks very among us. You do have the ability to dimension stuff in Tinkercad, but it's not the kind of dimensioning you might be expecting. So when you drag an object in, you need to make sure you have a, a ruler dragged in as well. Without that, it's very, very basic functionality. Uh, with a ruler and the object selected, it'll show all these dimensions in millimeters. This is showing the bounding box of the object and where it is in relation to the origin of the ruler. So the ruler's here, you can see I can move it up to here. And then for example, the height, I can change the height of the box to 10, moves it down like that. And then you can also freeform move it around as well. The issue here is when you wanna design stuff that's complex, like this maker coin, these dimensions aren't really good enough. And I'll demonstrate that by just deconstructing this maker coin. So to do that, I'm just gonna ungroup everything. So you can see how I've done it. I've created all of these cylinders that are patterned around the object but there is no pattern tool. It's like 3D Builder. So what I had to do is select each cylinder and position it in exactly the right spot based off just the external bounding dimensions. So for example, if, if I select everything and try to make it, you know, zero, zero, it's not gonna put the center point on zero. It's gonna put the outer edge of the bounding box on zero. So essentially what I did is I took the outer diameter, divided it by two, made that the measurements for the bounding box, and then did the same sort of thing for the cylinders. You know, these are 14 millimeters in diameter. There's no diameter functionality, it's 14 plus 14. So I had to divide that in two, so it's seven, and then add it or subtract it from the diameter of the cylinder in the middle to get it in the right place. So you can see just how quickly this gets really annoying um, and not really great for precise measurements. There is the ability to align things in terms of like equal spacing or aligning them along an edge but it doesn't really help for radial stuff like this. So to do this radial stuff, like I did in 3D Builder, I simply you know, grouped these two and then copy pasted them, put them in the right position, you know, using the dimensions, because you can see that's not correct. Uh, and then I rotated them the correct amount, like so. And then you end up with a coin like this. No fillets or anything fancy like that, and quite a low polygon uh, finish, because that's just how Tinkercad works. The, the primitives in there are fairly low polygon count meshes to do the functionality. So look, Tinkercad is a great first entry point, I think, for children. And you can even bring 3D uh, models into it. Like you can bring STL files into Tinkercad and modify them in a similar way. But I don't think that Tinkercad offers much in terms of its modeling aspect more than 3D Builder does on the computer. However, Tinkercad has all this other stuff they're built in now that you can do like electronic circuits and like programming, basic programming languages to make Tinkercad objects, almost like OpenSCAD and even physics-based simulations now as well. So if that sort of stuff's interesting, definitely worth checking out because again, it is free for personal use and education, but for 3D modeling of like complex shapes, yeah, uh, I would not recommend it. Um, if you want precise holes, precise dimensions and that sort of thing, use another program. And last but certainly not least, we have SelfCAD. SelfCAD is a bit of a weird one to include here. It's not uh, suitable for measured drawing or any sort of parametric modeling. It's actually more like Tinkercad with a bit of extra functionality in terms of modeling that style where you have these primitives on the left-hand side that you can bring in and modify to your liking. Or you can create shapes with a shape generator or you can draw, but it's not measured drawing. It's like, you know, drawing a shape that's gonna become a 3D object that you can then modify. The free version lets you do a couple of things, but a lot of it's locked down to their paid version. So for example, I can't use a lot of these different tools like to do a proper pattern, for example, is locked away and sculpting is locked away. And then when you create these primitives, you can then like combine them or difference them apart from each other. So for example, with this text that I created using the text generator, I can select that and the coin, and then I can use stitch and scoop, which is essentially Boolean differences or Boolean operations, I can do a Boolean difference and I can select what, um, what I want to difference away, which is a function I actually quite like to see. Sometimes some software makes it a bit difficult to know what you're removing, what you're keeping, and then you can do a preview 
and then it cuts away totally fine. But again, because this is a mesh, um, when it comes to like doing a fillet or that sort of thing, uh, it's very challenging because you can't actually select just the edge because you can see it's made up of all these little like lines and triangles. And uh, yeah, the free version is quite locked down. I couldn't test out any of these other features. And if you wanted to pay for the pro version, uh, it's only $15 US a month, which does unlock an awful lot. But if I was gonna choose between this and something like Shape of 3D for what I want to do for 3D modeling, which is having a feature tree, sketch-based functionality, and all that sort of thing, well, you know the one I would probably go for. As such, the Maker Coin looks okay, but it's lacking the fillets and the dimensions of the, the scoop in the middle aren't quite correct because it doesn't have the proper tangential curve to the outside edge, which it would have if I could do a proper measured drawing and revolve approach. So there you have it. All of the free CAD programs I could track down for this video to make a ton of Maker Coins. I spent so long learning these different CAD programs for you guys. And I really, really hope this video has been helpful to find a program that might suit your needs that is completely free to get started in the wonderful world of 3D modeling and 3D design. However, I will say that there's been a lot cut out of this video in terms of actually modeling each of these coins in each of their respective softwares. I'm gonna choose the most suitable programs out of this list I think are useful for parametric CAD modeling. I'm gonna make a tutorial for each in how to make the open source Maker Coin and upload it to the Makers Muse community page, which is only five bucks a month to get access to behind the scenes content. You can ask your troubleshooting questions, share your really cool projects, and it supports the channel a great deal. So you can find a link to that in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye.